very good morning to all of you. Thanks to Business World for inviting me here. Thanks to Bharat Institution. It's a pleasure speaking over here. We have just heard the extensive lecture by Professor T.G. Sitharam, the chairman of AICT. I promise I won't be that elaborative. But I have to do justice to my keynote speech, therefore I will be speaking for some time. Um, but uh, mostly on like uh, what has changed, say after NAP, after COVID, and uh, how the universities and colleges have to transform themselves, how AIU is trying to help them transform, and uh, what the future of education would be. So, because university industry interaction to a large extent, Professor, Sitharam has already spoken. So I'll start with the story, which I mean, I, I'm very fond of that, so I keep on speaking about that in every conference, so maybe some of you have already heard it. So it is, it is not a story, it is, a, it is something which happened uh, 100 years back, more than 100 years back, in 1905 with Einstein. So Einstein in 1905 gave a question paper to his students and when the student, I mean, when the question paper was about to be distributed, his teaching assistant came to him and said, sir, there is some problem. He says, what? Sir, some terrible mistake has happened. He says, what happened? He says, sir, this is the same question paper which we gave to the same set of students last year also. So how can we give the same question paper? So Einstein smiled. He said, there is no mistake. The question is the same. The question paper is the same. The questions are the same. But the answers are different. Why? Because in 1904, Einstein published four papers which are known as Annals of Physics Education, which was relating to theory of relativity, Brownian mission, E is equal to MC square and all, which changed the very paradigm of physics education. Therefore, questions were the same, but the answers were different. And he wanted to see whether his students have really understood those papers or not, they have gone through those papers or not. Similarly, before NEP and after NEP, before COVID and after COVID, before chat GPT and after chat GPT, questions are the same. What is to be taught? How is to be taught? How the assessment and evaluation of the students should be there? But the answers are totally different. For example, what is to be taught? We have been teaching some curriculum in our universities. We have been revising the curriculum, some in three years, some in 20 years, but some revision has been there. But if you see, ask somebody what will be the job scenario in say 2030, the job scenario in 2030 will not be these, say, clerical jobs or coding jobs or something like this. Because if you ask for a coder today, instead of coder, if you write to chat GPT, this is the problem. Give me a code in this particular language, it will give. So where will the coder work? So will that type of jobs exist? So jobs are totally going to sort of totally different types of jobs will be there, whether it is in artificial intelligence, robotics, even the world of uh, entertainment is changing with AR and VR. Even the world of tourism is changing. I mean, initially it was domestic tourism, then it was international tourism, now it is space tourism. So everything is changing. Therefore, the curriculum has to change very, very fast. Three years is also a very long time now. Depends upon the subject also, for example, history and all, maybe it can change in a little later time, but in subjects like technology on, it has to be changing very, very fast. Now come to how we teach. So how we teach in India, we were teaching mostly using the lecture method, but the NEP has said and COVID has taught us that lecture method is not always the best method. World over, the method used is flipped classroom model. They don't teach in the class, the students are given in advance the writings, I mean text or audios or videos. In the class only the discussion happens, understanding happens, problem solving happens rationalization happens, reasoning happens. So, so it is a totally different way of teaching. So that has to change. And now, with this AI and AI-related tools, the shift in teaching process will be all the more greater. In AIU, we have established a committee called, I mean, the title is Impact of AI on Higher Education. So the report will be coming very soon, and we'll be sharing it with all the universities. And in that report, we are talking about how AI will impact teaching learning, how AI will impact the governance of the universities, how AI will be impacting the assessment and evaluation, and for that impact, how the universities have to prepare themselves, how they have to train their teachers 
on using AI as an ally rather than a competitor. We cannot compete with AI. We have to use it as an ally. So how to use AI as an ally? How the students will be taught to use AI as a learning tool in terms of, for example, prompt engineering when we talk of. So what type of questions should be asked in chat GPT so that we get the right type of answers? So that committee we have already formed. So the teaching learning is, is going to change forever. And then the way we assess and evaluate our students, that is also going to change. Because that three-hour examination at the end of the semester, we have seen during COVID, it was not possible to hold it. But even if it is possible to hold it, the NEP says that it is not the best way of assessing and evaluating the student. The student should be assessed throughout. But now, when we say throughout, we were earlier talking about assignments, quizzes, say, one-to-one uh, -one discussions, group discussions, or quizzes. But now, with assignments, another thing has come. Now you give an assignment to the student, he goes to the chat GPT, prepares the assignment answer, and submits. So what to do with it? How to find out whether it is chat GPT? Or can you form an assignment in such a manner that chat GPT cannot answer that assignment? So, <laughs> so, so the way we assess and evaluate has to be quite, quite different. Similarly, a lot of, like, we're talking of industry collaboration. We, we did have a tie-up with CII. We, we called it 100-100 tie-up. That uh, we will identify 100 universities, CII will identify 100 industries, and we will do a one to one tie up between the universities. So that is going on. But then at, AI, we are, at AIU, we are trying to do many things to help the universities in promoting, uh, say, implementation of NEP. For example, we, we held many webinars first for creating awareness, like something simple, we, we call it simple concept like ABC. Academic Bank of Credit. Now, when we talk of ABC, most of the universities, when we ask, have you implemented ABC? They say, yes, yes, we have implemented ABC, we have implemented NEP. Then we ask them, what have you done in that? So then comes, okay, we have made it four years, we have allowed multiple <laughs> entry, we have made it uh, multidisciplinary, we have allowed multiple entry and exit. But is it actually working? No. It is only on papers. Maybe they have passed ordinances for multiple entry and exit, but they have not designed the courses in such a manner that, like, for example, if you are having a three-year BA or BSc program, and if you want to implement multiple entry and exit, you cannot say that if you complete first year, you will get a certificate, second year, you get a diploma, and third year, you get a degree. You have to redesign the curriculum in such a manner that each year is a complete capsule in itself. So how to do this? Have they done it? No, they, they, they say no. That we haven't done so far, we'll be doing it in future. Similarly, when you say ABC, how have you implemented ABC? ABC, they will say that we have, uh, our students have opened an account in ABC, and we have registered as an implementing agency for ABC with the ABC bank. Now, what is ABC? I, I mean, there are many misgivings about ABC. They were in two, three minutes, I'll tell what is ABC and what universities are supposed to do to do implement uh, ABC and what they have done. Now, ABC, in simple language, because I speak in a very, very simple language, it is like a uh, commercial bank in which you deposit money. ABC is a bank in which you deposit credits. Like you open an account in a commercial bank, similarly you open an account in ABC. Student will open an account in ABC. So in commercial bank, you deposit money. In ABC, you will deposit credits. So how will you deposit credits? The student can do different courses from different universities. And once the course is complete, he can go to the ABC. <coughs> For simplicity, I'll say bank manager. He'll go to the bank manager and say that I have completed this course from this university with these many credits with this grade. So enter it in my passbook. Again, passbook I'm using for simplicity. So the bank manager in the passbook will indicate that this student has done this course from this university from uh, this period, and this is the grade, and these are the credits. So he keeps on accumulating the credits, and once he has sufficient number of credits, say 200 credits, suppose the student has accumulated, then if he has come, if he has credits, say if he wants to do say BA economics, so he will see out of out of 200 credits, what are the credits which are relating to economics? So 
core credits of economics have to be complete and at least 50% of the credits have to be from a single institution where he wants to go and have a degree. Suppose he comes to Bharat institution, says give me a degree in lieu of these 120 credits, the Bharat will see that he has done at least 60 credits from my university and all the core credits required for economics are complete. Then the Bharat will give a degree to that student in lieu of those 120 credits and in the account of the student 120 credits will be debited because he has used them the way you, when you take out the money the money is debited from your account. So 80 credits will remain with the student and like this he can go, go on getting the degrees. Now the question here is it looks very simple it looks very interesting also. The question is how will the student accumulate the credits? How will he get admission in courses? Because right now, the universities are giving admission in full programs like BA, BSc, BTech, B. The papers within the co program, I mean, which we now call as courses, you're not giving direct admission to the papers or these courses. So unless you give admission in the courses, how will the student do multiple courses from multiple universities? So that is not possible. So there AICT is talking about NEAT where they can be allowing some ed tech companies to run some courses and the students can be learning, doing courses from those university, from those ed tech companies in collaboration with some universities. But till the student, till the universities start giving admission in courses, ABC cannot be implemented. So therefore, when we ask the universities, have you started giving admission in courses? They say no. So if it is no there, how can ABC be implemented? So therefore, it is very important for the universities to know that various aspects of national education policy, when they have to implement it, what they have to do to implement those particular provisions or recommendations of NEP. So that is not very clear to many, many universities. So in AIU, we did a uh, full one year was spent on this. Uh, that uh, how the various recommendations of NEP will be implemented. And we have come out with a report which is available on the AIU website which gives for each recommendation uh, what will be the uh, implementing agency like, who has to implement it, how they have to implement it, what is the action point, what is the time timelines are also given. So if you want to see that report you can go to AIU website and you can see it. And that will, that will give you a very, very clear picture on how to implement each and every recommendation of NEP. So that is a very good report. Similarly, we saw that uh, universities are struggling for internationalization of higher education. Uh, NEP has given a very big impetus to imp internationalization of higher education. But then we have, I mean, India is a large country, it is a diverse country. We have all types of universities, good universities, bad universities. And universities which are very good in internationalization, universities which are wanting to do internationalization, but they don't know how to do it how to go about it, whom to talk to, whom to contact, how to collaborate, in what all areas they can have internationalization, how to attract foreign faculty, how to attract foreign students. So for that, again, we have made a uh, network, we call it INHI, Indian Network of International Higher Educators, in which we are trying to handhold the universities who have the intent to do internationalization but are not knowing how to do it. So if you want to do real partnerships, if you want to do, inter even if you want to say, establish an international student's office, yesterday only we had a very good webinar from one person was from USA, one from Hyderabad, who, who told how to establish an international student's office. Because UGC issues circulars that every university should have an international student's office. But how to do it is not being told. So this is, this is the question which we are addressing. How to do different aspects, how to like, for example, Again, uh, we are telling that technology should be used for teaching learning. But how to use technology for teaching learning, that they are not telling. Again, at AIU, we have established 10 centers in 10 universities. One of them is in a Vinash Lingam institution. But in 10 universities, we are having those centers in which we are training the teachers on how to use technology for effective teaching learning. So these are, these are some of the activities which we are undertaking at our level to help our universities, uh, say, for, to further the cause of higher education or to implement NEP in a very, very effective manner. And anybody who has any difficulty or if they want to have any advice, you can also come to us. We are also starting a consultancy service in which we'll be having a panel of consultants who will be advising you on 
various aspects. It could be internationalization, it could be implementation of NEP, it could be NAC rating, it could be NIRF ranking, it could be SDG implementation, it could be NEP implementation. So if you want any advice from us, you can come to us. We are the largest association of the world with 940 universities as its members and the second oldest association. We are 98 years old. In two years, we'll be celebrating our centenary. So with this, I will just end my talk here. Thank you very much, and you are all welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.